According to reports, the incident occurred on February 16th around 11.15 p.m. The Denver Police Department believes the man coerced the woman into his truck. Shortly after, she jumped out of the truck and tried hiding from the man. Run, he found baby. her and allegedly forced her back into his car. Then That's she escaped great. again. This time she was able to call authorities. Ooh. Police arrested the man the following day. Ooh. The woman is reportedly safe and the man is being held for numerous possible charges including second degree kidnapping, criminal extortion, third degree assault, yeah, huh? and violation of a protection order. Well, Thank you to Bree and Flag the Police. This is why you should always take your lockdown drills seriously. In 2017, two 16 year olds were in their school bathroom when the lights suddenly went out and their school went into lockdown. Feeling rebellious, they decide, you know what, let's go explore the school a little bit first and then we'll go follow procedure. They step out of the bathroom and look down the hall towards their classroom and they see this large figure standing in front of their classrooms. It's definitely not a student, it's not a teacher, he's got ragged clothes on and he starts walking towards them. They dart right back into the bathroom to the corner stall where they hide, praying that that man didn't see them. The man bursts in and starts yanking open all the stalls. Not wanting to see what happens when he gets to their stall, they get on the ground and start crawling to the side of the room where they finally get up and make a run for the door. They look back and he's holding a gun. The boys manage to get away safely and no one's hurt, but the police never capture the ragged man. What? Can I show you a scary video? Slight trigger warning, this video did make me jump. This video comes from a YouTube channel called True Horror POV. This video was uploaded in 2020, and they actually claim it was based on true events. I'm just gonna show you the video. Here it is. Thanks, eh? Support, eh? Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 This is the terrifying image of a woman <laughs> Oh shit, I just screamed like a little bitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> woo. Woo. Woo, I'm gonna die, y'all. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, bruh. Why would they do that? Why would they... Uh, whatever. Powering on her rooftop, trying to escape an intruder when he pops up behind her. What happened to this woman is like something off a horror film. It was September 2014 and Melora Rivera was at her home in California. Unfortunately for her though, she was not home alone on the day in question, although she was initially unaware of this. Melora worked as an actress and actually had a part in the Whitney Houston film Sparkle. She was in her bed when she noticed somebody in her property. He had apparently broken a panel to reach inside and unlock one of the doors. Terrified, the woman tried to escape onto the roof to alert authorities. She managed to balance up on the roof and ring 911 before, terrifyingly, he jumped up and appeared behind her. This image was captured by a passerby. Thankfully, police arrived on the scene and the man was arrested. He was identified as 29-year-old Christian Hicks. He was swiftly arrested and the woman was rescued off the roof by the fire brigade. This is gonna scare you though, I don't know. No, no, I it. do it, do it. I love no, those this, stories. This is a real story. So lately I've been feeling kind of not myself. What? Yeah. And you know I'm religious, I'm very religious. So I decided to go to church on a Wednesday. Oh, okay, that's sick. So I went to church and um, this is gonna sound scary to you, but when it came time for like communion you know when you get the bread the eucharist yeah this is kind of fuck to say but like i was walking toward the priest and i had this urge to laugh yeah fam whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah no like i had this urge to like burst out laughing i was scared right i just kept praying and then you know what i mean locked it away like yeah, yeah. and then one night i had a dream it was like i heard someone screaming i was in the living room and i heard someone screaming for their life they were like screaming like, 
Get me out! Get me. Like, like, yeah, like screaming. This is exactly what I heard in my head. You're gonna get scared. Okay. This is exactly what I heard in my head. I... This sounds totally made up until you listen to the police report. In the early 90s, a teenage girl started to see these shadowy figures that would come into a room at night and crawl all around her room and even grab at her legs. At the same time, her health began to rapidly deteriorate, which ultimately led to her death, which doctors never understood. A few days after her death, her sister woke up to a whistling sound and saw a creature crawling around her room with no face. The same night, her mom was ripped out of bed by someone. The father calls the police who come over, they search the house, they don't find anything, it's all quiet. As they're about to leave, they hear something. Horrifying screams coming out of the bedroom. They run inside, no one's in there, but there are these huge gashes on the wall that were not there before. The police get out of there. In the police report that was filed immediately after this house call, the chief inspector and the three officers that were there that night swear they saw and heard the same things as the family, which means the police officially believed that the house was haunted. For centuries, people have spoken about Edward Mordrake, a 19th century Englishman who was born with an insidious face on the back of his head. This character is briefly featured in season four of American Horror Story Freak Show. According to legend, the second face on the back of Edward's head could not speak, but it would laugh, cry, and murmur horrific things to Edward while he tried to sleep that night. Edward would beg doctors to remove the second face on the back of his head, who he referred to as his evil twin, but no doctor felt comfortable enough to perform such a complicated procedure. Edward became so desperate to escape this evil twin on the back of his head that he would take his own life at the age of 23. For centuries, people have speculated whether or not Edward was real, and when I researched this, the only evidence I could find comes from an old medical book. Published in 1896, titled Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine, this book was written by two American doctors named George M. Good and Walter L. Pyle, who together compiled a book of all kinds of bizarre medical cases. One of these cases features Edward, and in the book it would state this. One of the weirdest as well most melancholy stories of human deformity is that of Edward Mordrake, said to have been heir to one of the most yeah, Abraham Lincoln on the back of his head. He never claimed the title and committed suicide in his 23rd year. He lived in complete seclusion, refusing the visits even of the members of his own family. He was a young man of fine attainments, a profound scholar, and a musician of rare ability. But upon the back of his head was another face, that of a beautiful girl, lovely as a dream, hideous as a devil. The female face was a mere mask, occupying only a small portion of the posterior part of the skull, yet exhibiting every sign of intelligence of a malignant sort, however. It would be seen to smile and sneer while Mordrake was weeping. The eyes would follow the movements of the specter, and the lips would gibber without ceasing. No voice was audible, but Mordrake adveres that he was kept from his own rest at night by the hateful whispers of his devil twin, as he called it, which never sleeps, but talks to me forever of such things as only they speak of in hell. No imagination can conceive the dreadful temptations that it sets before me. For some unforgiven wickedness of my forefathers, I am knit to this fiend. For a fiend it surely is. I beg and beseech you to crush it out of human semblance, even if I die for it. And further down in the book, it's noted that when Edward took his own life, he left behind a letter that asked that the face on the back of his head was destroyed before he was buried, out of concern that it would whisper to him in his grave. Also, on his own request, was that he be buried in a place that was not marked. Therefore, Edward was officially published in a medical book. Although I read that the doctors who wrote this book did not cite all of their sources, speculated that Edward could have suffered from a very rare craniofacial malformation, diprosopus. According to the National Library of Medicine, diprosopus is a duplication of a face, and this could be either partial or complete. During Edward's lifetime, diprosopus was not officially a medical term, so there is a very real chance that this could have been a medical abnormality that he suffered with. So there could be some truth to it, Man, although we don't all know where the Edward diseases and stuff that we don't know We've about never it. Seen any documentation of the skeleton. Oh, man. And the two doctors that included his case in their medical book not never even actually just cited where they received the information birth, from about Edward. The birth and defects of course, and all that stuff. And of course, we don't know if it whispered like... evil things into his ear or if it was something he was imagining. Regardless, I think it's interesting. It's one of those cases where you learn more about it and then you're still just as confused as you were from the beginning. What do you think? Follow along as we continue to unbox the other real people who have inspired the different American horror story seasons. How fast life can be taken from you. Oh shit. You're probably wondering just how many things had to go wrong for this to happen. This was back in the ancient times of 2004 in Kazingra National Park in India. Forest rangers were made aware of a tiger seen wandering near a village close to some cattle. 
which was a problem because any tiger that attacks someone's cattle is liable to get murked by that farmer. So the plan was to find a tiger, tranquilize her, and then airdrop her to a more remote place in the wild. There was one, actually two big problems with this. Earlier, two young tigers were also rescued and released. Turned out, those were her cubs. And number two, tigers are 500 pound weapons of utter vengeance with a 12 foot vertical. They're a vibe check that could box jump a small plane. All that added up to this man being at the worst place at an even worse time. There isn't a force in nature more intimidating than a turned up mother. The mother mauled the man, who for some reason brought an elephant hook to a tiger fight. Also, we have to acknowledge the sheer balls of a tiger launching itself at a whole elephant. The man survived but went to bed with less fingers than he started with. Don't think they ever caught the mother. I'm posting this video in case I get killed tonight. So, I'm in the middle of That's nowhere. That's how you start a conversation. And I'm the only person staying in this hotel. It's just me and the guy that owns it, okay? And oh, he was no. kind of creepy. Not to be mean. I, he was really sweet. Just like an older guy, whatever. But, you know, I could see him pulling something. I could. I could see him, you know, it's like giving Bates Motel over here. It really is. I should probably whisper. So, a few minutes ago, I heard this at the door. Yeah. And there's no people, so I had to go outside and no one was there. I'm really just not in the mood to get true crimed in the middle of Iceland right now. I just want to go to bed. But if you don't hear from me... Horrific dark web rabbit holes you should definitely avoid. Red Room. about this photo. This was sent to me by one of my followers, Laura, and when I read this true story about what happened to her, my jaw was on the floor. I've never read a story that actually happened to someone that was this terrifying. So let's get into the story. This photo was taken when I was one. I had a nanny back in Indonesia and she acted very strange. Everyone felt uneasy around her and felt chills whenever she was around. Her eyes were cold and she was awkward, but at first we didn't think much of it. She was only around for a couple weeks because the next thing that happened blew my mind. One day my mom came home and found our door unlocked, the lights off, and the sound of someone's voice chanting. And on top of that, I was screaming and crying. So my mom got our neighbor and together they barged in the door, only to find me latched onto my nanny and no one could pull me off. They had to perform some kind of exorcism in order to get my arms off of her. And then she started mumbling under her breath saying, this is impossible, usually they be by now. Later, we found out there was a group of people in a satanic cult that went around nearby towns pretending to be nannies so they can perform sacrifices to the devil and pretend it's an accident. In return, they were promised fame and money. And based on the words this lady mumbled after the ritual, it's clear that this isn't the first time she's performed this sacrifice. I only found this out months ago, but every time I see this photo, I feel chills down my spine. Oh my god. Thank you so much, Laura, for letting me share this story, and I'm so glad you're okay now. If you have a scary, strange, or just plain crazy story that happened to you or someone you know, send it to me because I would love to read your story. And follow for more. You guys know the drill when you see this background. I'm only telling you once. Today's story is on the gory side, so viewer discretion is advised. It's story time. Take a seat. I can't believe Nemo just touched that butt. On August 17th, 2003, there was a man by the name of Doug McKay who was the co-owner of this carnival in Seattle, Washington. On this day, Doug will be oiled. Hey, before I continue this video, make sure y'all like the video. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell, man. Please comment. If y'all got anything, man, put an emoji in the comment. I don't know, dude. What? Spam that motherfucker, you hear me? Interact. Let's grow. Let's let, let this channel grow. Let me uh get to know y'all. Let's interact. I mean, I know y'all be on here because I be saying something, y'all. That's good. What's the word, yo? I'm wavy. What's your name? You feel me? Back to the video though, man. Hit that button. Oiling up a section of the carnival's most famous ride. It went by the name of the Super Loop 2. Doug would be scanning the area of this roller coaster, looking at it, trying to figure out which parts to oil while it was still active and full of passengers. As the ride began going through its famous loop, Doug McKay was standing right underneath it. Unfortunately for Doug, his hair would be blowing straight up from the wind and it would cause it to get caught by the wheels on this roller coaster. After his hair was caught, the momentum of the roller coaster was just so great that it swooped him off his feet and just started carrying him along with the other passengers. After a short while of being ragdolled through the air by this ride, there'd be a piece of metalwork that was sticking out and it would go across his throat, cutting it. 
Man. The cut wouldn't be enough to kill him, but it would be enough to spray blood all over this little boy by the name of Dylan Bowles, who was directly in front of them when this happened. He would be the only one out of 30 people on that ride who got sprayed by Doug's blood. What in the final but the worst was yet to come. While Doug was still barely alive, the ride would loop the loop again, and this loop was so great that it tore his scalp clean off his head. The separation of his scalp would free him from the roller coaster, but with his throat cut and his head scalped, it sent blood spraying everywhere. Wait for it. Directly on a class of children who were standing in line for another ride. After these poor kids had been sprayed with blood, Doug would continue his journey through the air and crash into this beam that folded him in half like a lawn chair. Yes, man. He would finally die after hitting the concrete that was below him, but the impact was so great that it caused his guts, brains, you name it, to splatter everywhere. And hey, this man must did something bad. He must have been a bad person or did something bad in his past life. But all oh, that to happen, this nigga got stuck, got fling, cut thrown, hit by a thing, flew in the air, hit the ground, explode. Oh my god. Like, damn, bro, who are you? What? Damn. Remember, kids were here. Oh, and the icing on the cake, the splatter from that would get all over another bunch of kids who were just unfortunate to be walking by at the time. You just ran no Gross. kids out here. After this mayhem finally came to an end, the police and the fire department would come by really fast and try to cover up everything, but it'd be too late for the people that already saw it. Hey. The Super Loop 2 would be closed for the remainder Yahoo of the summer. Yeah, who ain't, Yahoo ain't messing with that sort of boy? Memorial for he is not rocking with him. Like and comment for more stories. You ever heard of the Cthulhu? No, what the hell is that? So the Cthulhu is like oh. this octopus monster. Kind of like the Kraken. Oh, I know about the Kraken. But it has wings. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Like octopus? The Cthulhu is said to live in like the very depths of the ocean, right? Yeah. And so the Marianas Trench is the deepest part of the world. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. We haven't even explored, what, like 80% of the ocean? I was reading about this too. Mm -hmm. For all we know, the Cthulhu could live in the, in the Marianas Trench. 100%. Yo, for all we know, the city of Atlantis could be in the Marianas Trench. Yes. But we don't know what's down there. Bro, That's the you thing. Know, there was a, you know, the anglerfish mm -hmm. with the, the light sticking yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, and Nemo. I, yeah, I, did, I didn't know that was an actual fish until yeah. Yeah. there's pictures of it, it like underwater and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a real fish. It lives yeah. in the Mariana Trench. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, what the hell? Tell us more about the moon than the Earth's water, yeah. which is crazy. You know, in the Mariana Trench too, they found, I don't know, it was in 2011 or something. Mm -hmm. They found a rock structure yeah. that looked like a UFO, fam. Damn. It was a week. And that make you think. That make you think because... Why would they put that in that movie? That's they seen that. They've been over there. They've been they've been down there. They've been discovering. They've, it's a lot of stuff that we don't know about. A lot of fish. <coughs> just because you seen it in the cartoon, be like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that shit real. It's real. Weekend night, November of 2015. My seven-year-old son Sean was having a sleepover with four of his friends. At the time, my wife wasn't home for whatever reason, so I had to keep a somewhat close watch on them without making it too obvious. They were all in Sean's room making a lot of noise, and when things would get either too quiet or too loud, I would sneak over to the bedroom door and just listen to what was going on. You may think that's weird, but this was my wife's instructions, and any married man knows you never want to go against what your wife tells you to do. When it was getting a little loud, I went over to the door and heard that they were all just simply playing with Legos and other toys very loudly. So I went back to the living room to watch TV. Right. Eventually, I heard weird thumping type noises coming from my son's room. I muted the TV and could distinguish them to be taps on one of the windows. I figured, let them have their fun so long as they're not breaking anything. I unmuted the TV. However, I quickly realized things went completely silent from down the hall in my son's room. Now I was nervous that they might have broken something, because it was very uncommon for them to all be completely silent for so long. So I once again crept over to Sean's bedroom door and listened. I could hear quiet giggling and whispering in the room. I finally opened the door out of curiosity and saw the four boys sitting on the rug with a mess of toys scattered all over the place. I noticed that the window was completely open. I told Sean to keep it shut, and to also keep the noise down a little bit before shutting the door. I made a stop into the bathroom before planning to go back to the living room. However, when I was in the bathroom, I noticed through the corner of my eye a black shadow passing the window outside. I ran back to my son's room and told the four boys not to go outside. Then that's when it hit me. 
There were only four boys in the room as opposed to five. Sean's friend Tom was missing. In a panic, I yelled at Sean to tell me where he was, and they all pointed to the open window. Sean said that he left with the pirate to go find the treasure. In that moment, I felt a mixture of feelings in my stomach, but mostly like it was about to explode. I wouldn't be able to fit through that window, so I ran out the front door and caught view of a man holding Tom's hand and walking towards a car. I yelled at him to stop. They both turned around, and then the man let go of Tom, hopped into the tan-colored Toyota Corolla, and floored it down the streets. I ran to grab Tom and brought him back inside. I was no longer comfortable with the sleepover, and called all the parents, told them what happened, and suggested they all come and pick up their kids, which is exactly what they did. I received a bit of criticism from Tom's parents at first, but they ultimately thanked me, and their son is still good friends with my son. The boys all said that a random man came to Sean's window, knocked on it, lifted it open himself and talked in a pirate voice, asking one of the kids to come with him to find the treasure. The fact that this happened in the assumed safety of my own house, and that it actually worked, is what disturbs me the most. What? Drop in the comments your uh, thoughts on that, because that's crazy. What would you do? <laughs> what would you do? I can only imagine if I was that daddy and I come in there and one of the kids missing. What? What? But first off, I ain't gonna lie, like, um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't even, I can't even say what I do in that situation. Just hope that something like that never happens. But that's crazy. What is my favorite gun? My favorite gun is a Glock 43. Unfortunately, they're not legal in California. Even with my concealed carry. I don't want to talk about prison right now. And yes, I'm still donating money to the victim's family. Yeah, I go to the range almost every weekend. I go with my husband and all of my brothers. I'll pick you up after you get off. Do you want in and out? You are the best big brother ever. I didn't even know you were in here. Oh, my cousin's in the chat. Not you tracking me. All right, going random on it. <laughs> and it She's took us smart. to this shady park in the middle of nowhere. So let's see what we find. All we see so far is like trees. What the fuck was that? A bridge. Trees. Nah, I mean, nah, y'all seen that shit. All we see so far shit. is like trees. Somebody just hid behind that tree, A bro. bridge. I think we have to go over this bridge and our location's a little down there. What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Uh, should we keep going? What the fuck? Oh my god, is she following us? The show The Watcher on Netflix is scary, and it's based on a true story. Let's take a deep dive. So if you've seen the show before, it's basically about a family that moves into a house in New Jersey, and someone watch- Hey, fuck it, got me again. Hey, look. Look, I ain't, I, by no means, <laughs> am I scary, you feel me? It's just, when you catch me off guard, <laughs> I'm gonna yell and back up and get ready. <laughs> you feel me? Because I'm surprised. <laughs> But I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Watches them. AKA stalks them, harasses the family, all that. This is the house that the story originally came from in real life, 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. The show follows the fictional Brannock family pictured here, who are based on the real life Broadus family pictured right here. So basically in 2014, this family, the Broadduses, they purchased the house at 657 Boulevard in Westfield for $1.3 million and they were getting all their ducks in line and getting ready to move into the house when they received the first letter from a phantom man named The Watcher. Here's some of the text from the original letter. He says, my grandfather watched the house in the 20s, my father watched it in the 60s, now it's my time. And the family continued to receive these mysterious letters until they became threatening. I'm gonna post a part two soon, so follow if you wanna hear more. Remember how I be telling y'all if you hear somebody knocking on your door or somebody you hear somebody's voice but no one is home? Never open the door. Scary story time. And this story, this time, is actually not my dad's story. It's my friend's story. She's also Haitian, and she wanted um, to share her story with you guys. So when her family was supposed to come to this country, coming from Haiti, they kept it a secret. And this is actually a common thing, because even with me too, when I was coming, it was an absolute secret. Nobody knew but me, my dad, and my grandma, and my uncle. And my uncle was a pastor is a pastor but the reason for that is people are jealous 
And people will do anything to stop you from where you need to be. When they see you prospering and it's not them, I've seen it happen so many times in Haiti. Anyway, so that was the case for her and her family. At the time, it was her and her brother. And when I tell y'all, it was an absolute secret. Nobody knew they were coming to America, but the people living in their house. It was literally top secret, which is why it was shocking to her mom when she got a phone call from a church member. Mind y'all, they weren't even that close. Like that church member, it's not like they were like best friends. It was just somebody they went to church with and she actually lived very far too. Now, there was this lady that they knew that everybody knew was a Lugau, but it wasn't their business, you feel me? Like that's that's the lady's problem. That's her, she do her. Anyway, so the mom gets a phone call from um, the church member and the church member tells her mom, I had a dream and I know that you guys are leaving, you guys are going to America, but so-and-so, the, the lady that's a Lugau, does not like that. And she has something planned for y'all so that it does not happen. Mind y'all, they don't even know how the Lugau lady found out that they're leaving, but I mean, you know, Lugau. The church member tells her from her dream that she was told to tell her mom these instructions. First one is, of course, make sure that nobody else finds out second one was to there was this uniform they used to wear um to church for saturday services she tells them to keep that uniform and all of their clothes that they're going to wear until the day that they leave and make sure that nobody touches those clothes and the last thing that she told her to do was that the car that was supposed to transport them to the airport change it absolutely change it so they did all of that, they prayed, they followed directions and stuff like that, and everything worked out well. They got here thinking it was over, but whoo, was it far from over. Mm. I need part two. <sighs> oh, bro, I ain't got time for this scary shit, bro. It's Tristan. Shut the door, make sure it clicks. Okay, stand back. Play your footage. Stop. Play it live. Play it live. Well, all right, y'all, that's today's video. Man, as y'all see, it was a couple of scary ones in there. You know, I, you know, a couple of scary ones. I had a little jump, a little jump. You know, nothing made. Man, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all stay tuned for the next video. So y'all already know what y'all need to do. Y'all already know what you need to do. But uh, till then, man, stay wavy. I'm up out of here.